So here we are in the Galleria area, beautiful blue sky above our heads, finally the, the sun has come out and I've got a little piece of sunshine with me here, I'm going to go for a walk through the India area. What's your name and where do you come from and please say a few words about yourself. I'm India and I'm a design consultant and I'm an editor of a digital magazine and this is my friend Ayush Stahl, he's designed and curated the Make in India Pavilion and I'm so excited to be here. And honestly, I'm proud of India and that it's a partner country at Ambiente 2019. I think it's a great moment for us. And I'm going to take you through a few of my favorite pieces in the stall today. So, should we go? That would be awesome. Please, let's Thank go. You. Here we go. So, we've got hand, hand make here. Hand make in India. So, everything is made in India. Each piece is handcrafted, designed, and Ayush has cu curated a lot of it. And a lot of the pieces are also designed by him. So oh, really? Wow. Is it? That's really cool. Yeah, and he's got a brand called Anantaya and AKFD. So he's got a few pieces of that. And this one's by a studio Bordeloy. It, I think this is very interesting. It's a cute little stool. It's made out of brass. And then he's got this amazing indigo section over here. When you say indigo, you mean the color, the tones, the and the color, the tones, the textures. And what's interesting is the rug. So it's very natural. This is by a brand called the Rug Republic. And then you have a beautiful Persian rug over here. which Those colors are gorgeous. Knotted. Yeah. This is by this company called Jaipur Rugs. And everything's handmade. They have villages where all the women sit and they actually do each piece by hand. Some of them take close to eight months to make as well, the silk rugs that they have. And then we have <clears throat> a laundry basket over here. This is made out of re recycled plastic. And this actually is done by me in collaboration with a brand called Urmi. So I've given him a few pieces as well to put into the stall. And again, these are done by women and they've used recycled plastic and they create contemporary designs out of what was a traditional handicraft back in the day. So it's basically evolving the traditional handicraft of woven goods with, with new materials that are obviously water bottles and these sort of things uh, provide the material, I'd yeah. imagine. And you get colourful wires and then that's woven into a different piece. Like you'll see another monochrome one over here as well. One second. Do you see that? And you can oh, wow. change up the colours, you can change up the weave. So it's really interesting and you can make anything out of it. It looks almost like it's been melted, but it's actually just one piece of material wrapped mm -hmm. around many times. It's one single piece and then it just keeps evolving, evolving, evolving. Oh. And then the other piece, which is really interesting, is one done by Ayush. You can see this chair. And what's interesting is he's reinvented a very traditional handicraft mm -hmm. and converted it into a very contemporary design. So it doesn't, if you look at it, do you think it looks very Indian or what is your opinion? I would say it looks very European from, from its mm -hmm. form, form language, yes. The shape, the metal, all of that, even the color. So it's got a very nice neutral palette to it. So it's quite interesting. Mm -hmm. Is this something common, obviously the back and forth from, I'll say, more European aesthetics, more European manufacturing process, mixing with traditional Indian? Correct, because that sort of makes it more contemporary, makes it more relatable, mm -hmm. because otherwise I think everyone thinks Indian design is very, is too ethnic or too, mm -hmm. um, what is, uh, too traditional. So it's, it's a good blend. Yep. Like, oh. <laughs> take, take me where you want, take me, take me, take me to your master. The standard copper material and created this bowl. And this is another one of your designs? No, this one's on mine, sadly. Okay. It's by a brand called Studio Copper. Mm -hmm. So again, they've sort of, it's a good spin on the material. Ideally, this would have been a flat base and it would have been more traditional. So again, they've sort of reinvented this, which is interesting. A bit more playful, obviously. More playful, more young, more fun. And can you say, I mean, on this one table, you've got, I say, four or five different aesthetics all playing together, but it's all Indian, correct? It's all very Indian. So the material is very Indian, even the way of making it is very Indian, but I think it's the design and the functionality that sort of makes it different. So that's, a big, that's a big plate. Big plate. It's really heavy. I was trying to pick it up. Mm. Go, go around there if you like. Someone's standing here. Hello. And we have Ayush over here. He's the one who's designed this beautiful pavilion and spearheaded. Hi. Hi. Hi, Ayush. The one we were just talking about you and the chair and every other piece you've created. I think each one is fantastic. Oh. You, need to, you need to stay a bit closer to me. My arms are long. Let me just sneak over <laughs> here. That's part Maybe of live. Ayush, 
as well and tell you all about this amazing pavilion that he's designed for us. Cool. And you guys have known each other? You guys know each other? We met at the Ambiente Press dinner and we got talking and we realized we knew a lot and we have this strong passion for design and I think that's where the connection sort of started. Design bringing people together and nice to meet you sir. My name is Ben Wilson from the Ambiente Facebook Live team and you're the designer, the brains behind this stand. Please introduce yourself to our, to our viewers and uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and how was it to create this area at Ambiente 2019. Um, hi, my name is uh, Ayush and um, I'm from Jaipur, India and this is kind of like a dream come true because we all feel so passionately about India and we know India really deeply and to show it to the world is something that I always really wanted to do and show it in a way that is befitting. Mm -hmm and uniquely Indian. So the stand is inspired by Indian cities. So if you see the skyline of Lucknow or Delhi or Jaipur, incredible skylines, beautiful with minarets and domes and flat ceilings and people flying kites. So it's, um, we've kind of tried to interpret that in a, in a sketch-like way. Yes, like those domes yeah. and those kites. Beautiful. So, so uh, the accents you've put to sort of re re remember, remind people of the different cityscapes. Yep. And also, you know, the thing is that in India, it's all about discovery. So when you walk the streets, you discover things. Um, unlike a window to show the world, we have, we trust people's eyes to discover what they seek. Mm -hmm. And we've kind of done this pavilion in a similar way. So where your eye wanders, you'll suddenly discover something because of different heights, different things, and I think that is the joy in, in, in India, of discovering things constantly. And have, have you been meeting people over the last few days? Have, the, have they have been having the experience as, as you intended? Have you been talking to people as they're coming through? Yes, I, I, I'm very pleasantly surprised, and you know, one thing is that a lot of people do not realize what all India is about. Yeah. So um, we've, we've curated products which, are, which have stories to them, which have a reason to exist. And, uh, you know, in, in the show, typically, one sees a lot of product. And um, so to, to present a product with a story or why it exists and put it in a beautiful way is what I think people have responded very well to. And uh, in the sense of finding out more about what is possible and, um, yes, just kind of enjoying themselves. It's, uh, it's been very nice. Have, and the, um, it says hand make. I mean, have you got a special area or anything you'd like to show us, maybe, as to, which really embodies what, what the, the storytelling nature? Uh, have you got some, some areas you would like to show us? Sure. So I'll, uh, I'll, sh I'll take you to the... So what we did was we kept one section, which is about product. Which is the one we just saw. The one we just saw. And uh, one section on the stories. Um, you know, people don't realize the extent of, uh, of craftsmanship mm -hmm. in India. And we do, it's not about one person sitting in their home and making something. It is entire communities mm -hmm. and communities who've been doing that same work for a thousand years. And the scale of that is mind boggling. Mm -hmm. And if you share that scale, probably people will get more comfortable about working with crafts and, and give it the due respect that, that it deserves. Well, they can learn from those thousands of years of, 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 of experience. Yes, true. And you know, particularly in this day and date, you know, when sustainability is such a strong um, movement and it's something which is so essential, to look at examples that are there already would be great learning for all of us. And they've been working for that, that, that long time as well. Yes, they have been working for that longer time. So, so what, what, what have we got? Obviously from different, different placards here, different, different information t uh, tables. Tell me, uh, have you got a favorite one or a story you'd like to share with us? Well, I mean, uh, they're all uh, amazing organizations. I'm sure, I'm <laughs> sure they're all interesting. So I'll just uh, speak to you about a couple of them. So this is um, Rangasutra, which is a small artisan-owned organization based in Bikaner. And they work across large parts of Rajasthan, work with thousands of craftspeople. And they work with big clients also. So to, to be able to perfect craftsmanship to the level where a bigger client is satisfied is a challenge and they've managed to do that. Um, this is Sandur, which works with um, uh, the Lambani tribal women mm -hmm. out there and uses their skills to develop product, um, you know, which is uh, you know, part of their cultural milieu as well. Um, and then we have organizations like uh, Dastkari Hat Samiti, Dastkar, it, these, these are all various organizations that add the missing um, links 
to the craft. So, uh, like Kamir, for example, works in this area called Bhuj, which is devastated by an earthquake. Mm. You know, that was the same time I got married, the same year. So, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you know the year. We won't. I won't ask. <laughs> and um, you know, out there, Kamir has taken up this entire area and worked with crafts, worked with a fabric called Kala cotton, which literally means black cotton, mm -hmm. uh, which is an indigenous variety of cotton. So on one hand... Which, one, which one's this? So we can make sure we get some pictures to the story. So this is Kamir, uh, and this is about Kala cotton. So cotton is one of India's staple fibers, but a lot of the cotton that comes out now is genetically modified, and it requires a lot of water, a lot of fertilizer. But this is the indigenous cotton, and it's the same fabric. This is color cotton. So this is the coarser variety. You also get much finer varieties also. So, you know, when we talk about craft, when we talk about scale, we also need to talk about all these other things. Mm -hmm. So, um, which is why we, we love Kamir. Uh, they're working with a lot of other indigenous crafts like leather working, bell making, um, making homes, huts out of mud and uh, thatch in a very nice modern way. So, you know, I'm an absolute fan of uh, uh, Kamir. Incredible stories, incredible stories. Have you ensured that people know the stories behind me and just walk up and touch this? Have you been guiding people through? I've been guide, guiding people through, yes. Awesome. Have you had a chance to look at any of the Ambienta 2019 other areas as well? Yes, I have. Um, some of the areas are really, really very beautifully done. But uh, some places also have a lot of stuff, um, which... I know it's important, and I know we're in a trade fair, but I would wonder whether that is the way forward and see if we can reduce um, but make more meaningful things, mm -hmm. make things that we relate with, and look at a bigger picture. Mm -hmm. So uh, while this experience is great in terms of knowing and seeing what is going on, um, seeing the future of humanity is also a very important thing. It's also I mean, quite a good segue to some of the topics which we've observed over the last four days. Sustainability is like a buzzword, but there's actually some companies who have taken it to the next level almost in a surprising manner this year um, and talking about the way they make their products, simplifying some of their portfolios, taking away the, some from, from the many products they have, mm -hmm. reducing it down to a few very unique and special offerings. And I think there's the words you say, more people understand that's important moving forward. So uh, really, really wise words and, and, and thank you for sharing that. Have you got any closing remarks for people who, for people who have not been to your stand yet? Be here. <laughs> <laughs> Come by. Come by. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how long are you staying when you're heading back home? Um, I'm staying here for a few days, making sure everything is wrapped up properly. So um, in a very typical Indian way, we said we're not going to waste the stand. So we built it in India. We brought it here, assembled it. We'll take it down and ship it back to India so they can be reused for other exhibitions. Designed for longevity, yes. a man of, man of my heart. <laughs> very, very good to hear. Well, again, really appreciate your time, and thank you very much for uh, talking with us and sharing some of your stories. Thank you. So as you said, as you just heard, please come down to the Galleria, uh, find, the, the, find some time to meander through the, the gallery here, um, and see if you can't be inspired. Maybe slow down, ask yourself a few questions uh, about which elements of this space inspire a thought in regards to what he was just saying, focusing on the things that are most important, things that matter, and being selective and not just putting everything out on display, but choosing the ones that actually matter to you, um, as he just described, very interesting stories. Uh, and take time to read some of the stories on the wall. I, I did that before, very, very interesting stories to be, to be read.